hello everyone and welcome back so in this video we are going to understand the concept of constraints okay so first of all create a new file name constraint examples inside our basic widgets folder okay and create a stateless widget name my constraint example and over here we are having a simple scaffold with app bar and inside a body we are having a container okay with a color of red okay so a flutter layout can't really be understood without knowing this rule okay so that without knowing this rule that constraints go down size go up parent sets positions i know it's not that much understandable but let me tell you in more detail a widget get its own constraints from its parents okay a constraint is just a set of four doubles a minimum maximum width and a minimum maximum height then the widget goes through its own list of children one by one the widget tell its children what their constraints are which can be different for each child okay and then ask each child what what size it wants to be okay then the widget positions its children one by one and finally the widget tells its parents about its own size so as a result of a layout rule mentioned above okay a widget can decides so some of the limitations of this are a widget can decide its own size only within the constraints given to it by its parents this means a widget usually can't have any size it wants a widget can't know and doesn't decides its own position in the screen since it's the widget's parent who decide the position of its child widget okay so we are going to explain we are going to understand this through some examples so as you can see we are having a container okay now the screen is the parent of the container okay and it forces the container to be the exactly the same size as the screen okay so the container fills the entire screen and paint it red now the red container wants to be a 100 by 100 Okay so let's provide it some height and width okay 100 and width also 100 okay and if we hot reload it <laughs> we are having a red container with an height and width of 100 and 100 so now let's wrap it inside a center widget okay the screen forces the center and let's hot reload it okay now the screen forces the center to be exactly the same size as the screen okay so the center fills the entire screen now the center tells the container that it can be any size it's want but not bigger than the screen so now the container can indeed be 100 by 100 only now now if you want to align uh, or you want to position your container somewhere else except the center so we can use another widget name align okay and over here you have to use its alignment property and it will give you the alignment dot and it will give you the various positions that if you want to align this container to the center bottom center center left okay yeah top left yeah uh okay or uh, top left or top right so let's make it top right and see how it changes so you can see the position of a container has been changed okay now this was a line and so we will remove this i hope you have got the idea how to use it so now again we are having a container inside our center and this time instead of height and width to 100 we'll make it to double dot infinity which means it will acquire the entire space of the available screen similarly copy paste the same values for width as well hot reloaded so 
the screen forces the center to be exactly the same size as the screen so the center fill the screen and now the center is telling the container that it can be any size but not bigger than the screen and the container wants the infinite size but since it can't be bigger than the screen it just fills the screens with red okay now let's have a container inside our container so we'll simply remove this height and width and this time we'll provide one more container as a child of this parent container and its color will be something different so let's say green okay and we'll provide it some width as well so let's say we provided a width of 30 and a height of 30 and now let's hot reload it so now you can see the screen forces center to take the available or to fill the available fill available screen space okay and the center tells the container that it can be any size it's want but not bigger than the screen size now since the red container has no size but a child it decide it wants to be the same size as it child okay so the red container tells it tells its child that it can be any size it's want but not bigger than the screen so here our green container or you can say the child container wanted to be of 30 by 30 so given that the red container sizes itself to be of the same size okay so the parent wants to be like its child this is what you can simply imply now now we'll take one another example okay now this time we'll simply add some padding to our previous container okay as you all know that the padding is to provide space between two widgets inside some container okay it is the space between widgets okay so let's take it all and make it 20 okay now the red container size it itself to its children's size but it takes its own padding into consideration as well so it is also 30 by 30 plus padding okay the red color is visible because of the padding and the green container has the same size as in the previous example okay now we will see an example of constraint box so remove the previous code and write down this one and hot reload it so you might guess that the container has to be between 70 and 150 pixels but you would be wrong the constraint box only imposes additional constraint from those it from those it from those it receives from it parents so here the screen enforces the constraint box to be exactly the same size as the screen so it tells its child container to also assume the size of the screen thus ignoring its constraints parameter okay but now if we just simply wrap this constraint box inside a center and now if we hot reload it so now center allows the constraint box to be any size up to the screen size so the constraint box imposes the additional constraint from its constraints parameter onto its child so the container must be between 70 and 150 pixels it wants to have 10 pixels so it ends up having the minimum constraints value which is 70 for both minimum width and minimum for both height and width okay and now if we change the value of this child container from 10 to let's say 100 or let's say 1000 okay so now this time it will select the maximum constraints parameter of the constraint box because the container was supposed to be between this range of 70 to 150 pixels for both height and width but here it has crossed the value of the maximum width and height so that's why the constraint box has taken into consideration about its maximum height and width constraint so that's why now the container now the child container can only have the maximum height and width of 150 pixels okay but now let's say if we change it to 100 okay 
so now the container must be between 70 to 150 pixels but it wants to have the 100 pixels range okay so this time so this time the constraint box allow it to have its own size and that is the size it has since it is between the 70 and 150 pixels okay now we will see one new widget which is also one sort of flexible widget which, which i forgot to show you guys in the previous expanded and flexible widgets okay so simply all we have to do is remove this entire widget from the center and instead of this we will be have a fitted box okay so what does this fit is box is that it creates a widget that scales and positions its child within itself according to the fit okay and the fit and the alignment arguments must not be null of this widget so here we will be having a child of text and let's say some example text okay and now let's just run it so the screen enforces the fitted box to be exactly the same size as the screen okay so here we are having some text as a child inside our fitted box with some font size okay so the screen enforces the fitted box to be exactly the same size as the screen the text has some natural width okay that depends on the amount of text its font size and so on so the fitted box lets the text be any size it wants but after the text tells its size to the fitted box the fitted box scales the text until it fills all the available width okay so now let's just wrap this fitted box inside a center widget the center lets the fitted box now the center lets the fitted box be any size it wants up to the screen size the fitted box then sizes itself to the text and lets the text be any size it wants. Since both fitted box and the text have the same size, no scaling happens. Okay. Now let us put some uh, large text inside our fitted box. Okay. Just copy paste this and paste it again, again and again. Okay. So, what will happen now? As you can see that however what happens if the fitted box is inside of the center widget but the text is too large to fit the screen. Okay, so the fitted box tries to size itself to the text but it can be bigger than the screen. It then assumes the screen size and resizes the text so that it fits in the screen. Okay. So let's just remove some of the text so you can see at least a little bit clearly okay the text has been fitted to the screen now we'll just remove this fitted box okay and this time we'll place it inside a container and we'll provide it some color let's say color is dot red okay and we will change this center to row widget okay now row can't have child so we'll make it children and we'll place our container inside this okay now let's see what will happen to this extreme large text so as expected that it is showing us this pixels overflowed error okay so since row won't impose any constraint onto its children it's quite possible that the children might be too big to fit the available width of the row so in this case just like columns and any unconstrained box the row displays the overflow warning so what to do so simply what we can do that we can simply wrap this container inside a expanded widget. I hope you recall what is an expanded widget and how it is to be used. So as you can see now 
that it is working properly now let's create one more container okay and this time let let it have some text only let's reduce its text and also and we'll provide it some different color So here we are done and let's see how our row works so it is working very much perfectly so when a row child is wrapped in expanded widget the row won't let so the row won't let this child define its own width anymore instead it defines the expanded width according to the other children and only then the expanded widget forces the original child to have the expanded width in other words once you use expanded the original child width becomes irrelevant and it is completely ignored so similarly you can try the same example for column widget as well okay so as you can see it worked properly so i hope you that i don't need to that i don't need to explain this again okay so that's all for this video i hope now you have got uh, the concept of constraints very much clear that what is expanded means and how to use center and how to use their width and height and when this particular constraints are ignored and when they are mattered the most okay and in our next video we are going to learn about the concept of navigations so see you in the next video